Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Talk of the Town. Today, I am with a couple of folks who we have spoken to before and always enjoy the experience. Um, Cecily Miller and Stuart Iketa are here from Arts Arlington. Cecily and Stuart, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Um, I want to start off by just, you know, acknowledging, of course, we continue um, in COVID-19 era um, and undoubtedly it's had some effect on the work that you guys do. But let's start with a general introduction and then we can talk about how you are continuing to do uh, what you do uh, under the current constraints. So, um, Stuart, why don't you tell us a little bit, just introduce the audience, though many may be familiar with Arts Arlington already. Give us an introduction. Uh, sure, thanks. Um, Arts Arlington is the really the front-facing brand for the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. We're an umbrella organization that was activated in 2014 to coordinate arts and cultural activities all throughout the town. Uh, we work with the town Department of Planning and Community Development and bring together what used to be several uh, separate cultural entities the Arlington Cultural Council, Arlington Public Art, Art Links Artist Network, uh, the Arlington Cultural District uh, Planning Committee, Live Arts and the Poet Laureate Office, among others. So we promote and develop arts and culture programs, events and resources uh, with the mission to create a sustainable and vibrant art scene in town that will engage and attract not just artists, but all the residents, businesses, attract more visitors to the town. Um, our commissioners and our committees engage in activities such as uh, grant making and supporting artists through direct grants, the fundraising, uh, we create public art installations in town, we run performances, live arts busking performances around town, uh, many of the festivals, um, artist networking and development services, destination marketing, um, and we oversee, we work with other town entities to help them incorporate arts and culture into their own planning, uh, from the parks to the schools to tourism and economic development. So, uh, our you guys have a couple of things to do there, huh? <laughs> I guess, <laughs> well, I guess the audience can tell that we're going to have plenty to talk about in this half hour. We, we are. And, and the thing is, is, much of our work is, is unseen because I mean, some of it's in front facing and there are things that people would recognize, like the wonderful Pathways project that Cecily's been so um, central to, the Transformer boxes, youth banners, the live arts performances like Garage Band and celebrations like Arlington Alive Block Party and those sorts of things. But equally important is that we're providing an infrastructure that fosters a supportive environment for the arts in all aspects of town life. Um, and publish. Short, mm -hmm. Excuse me for interrupting, Stuart, sure. but why don't you just remind uh, our audience of what your own role and and Cecily, you can jump in also and just explain what your role is, and then we'll keep going with what with with the uh, the projects that you've got that you've begun to describe. Oh sure. Uh, currently, I'm uh, a co-chair with Kristen Canterbury Bagnall. Uh, of the commission. It's a 13 member commission um, that's appointed by the select board and the town manager. And Cecily, uh, talk yes, about your well, role. I'm the um, curator of public art and I work to develop public art projects in Arlington temporary. They're all temporary projects that have a pretty strong community engagement aspect. Um, often people in the community actually uh, work with an artist to create the public art. All right, thanks very much. Sorry for the interruption, Stuart. No, no, sure. Um, so some of the other front-facing ways that we, we interact with the public um, are through presenting Arts Arlington website and social media channels. Um, these are uh, free resources. We have a town-wide cultural events calendar. Everything that's happening in arts and culture in town uh, is on there. It's all free resource. Artists can list their services there. Venues can list uh, their rental opportunities. Uh, arts educators can list their classes there. Uh, it also has an interactive map uh, that helps people wayfind through the Arlington Cultural District, which we're helping to develop. Um, it's got networking resources, calls for opportunities, 
calls for art um, and different ways that artists can you know, find support. Since COVID-19, we've been working with the town to um, both present support information for artists and for business arts related businesses that have been impacted. Um, we yeah, I was wondering um, about that. Uh, I, I imagine that, you know, obviously COVID has had a, a profound impact on everybody's operations. Um, and what, I, what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that in your case, you've really, you have lost the ability to do in-person events like everybody has, um, but you've it's kind of shifted your focus um, a, as a result to the, in terms of the way that you collaborate and support what's going on in town. It's really caused us to focus on our long-term planning, how we can build an infrastructure for community building through the arts. Um, a good example of a COVID pivot is one, one example is the COVID masks project that um, was installed at the Arlington service station on Mass Avenue, if you've seen it. Um, we worked on connecting local businesses like Arlington service station, Heritage Flag Company, with local artists, Johnny Lapham, Laurie Bogdan, and Kimberly Harding, and a network of volunteers to create a series of giant, giant size, artfully designed uh, mask banners that thank frontline workers, but they also reinforced the town's public health messaging about uh, wearing masks. Um, and we, were, we brought together uh, public and private business and artists and in uh, collaboration, and we're proud and honored that the statewide Mass Creative uh, recently spotlighted the town of Arlington as a model for this kind of community networking through art. And so it's, it's those relationships building that in the long term helped us pivot pretty quickly um, and create something like that that just improves the quality of life in the neighborhood. Um, we've similarly pivoted um, in, in finding ways to present many, like so many uh, organizations, many of our lot planned live programs through virtual means. And Cecily has been absolutely amazing innovator in bringing to life some of our planned events we had to cancel our traditional fox festival and parade um, our first ever townwide artist in residence program um, and i'm really looking forward to her sharing some of these uh, uh, things we've been doing out of there um, i'll just say one more thing i think we're also working um, on our own uh, operations plan as a commission and really building building out um, a strong organization. So we've taken the time of COVID to review our strategic plans and goals, which include you know expanding um, uh, our performance, as, as providing more services to other town entities, and also um, really focus on building cultural equity um, as one of our core goals for the next couple of years. We're planning a, a number of um, activities to reinforce you know, the town's responses to social inequities and racial justice. Um, I'd like Cecily to uh, tell us about the Cedric, Cedric Douglas talk that we've got coming up, because that's coming up very soon. Cecily. Yeah, so actually uh, Cedric, w Cedric Douglas is a wonderful artist who came to Arlington three years ago when I did my first project in the town um, to create Storefront Stories, which was uh, collecting personal stories from um, the owners of small businesses in Capitol Square and then creating these huge wheat paste murals on the outside of buildings there. So we have a relationship with him and he um, does wheat paste, he does large scale murals, but he has a whole other body of work that's called Tools for Protest, where he has been creating artwork about black people, black men and women killed by police. He's figured out these very innovative ways to memorialize um, people in public spaces and um, created some caution tape actually uh, emblazoned with the last words of some of the 
victims of police violence that are being used. They were made three years ago, but they're being used in actions today in some of the protests we see in Boston. So he's going to come on August 11th and just share the story of this work that he's been doing as an artist and as an activist. I think it'll be really interesting for people in the town to hear about. And we're working with the high school art department to co-present that and also recruiting some other partners. In fact, it'd be great to have ACMI as a partner. So- I'm um, sure we would be, yeah, we would be happy, of yeah. course, to collaborate with such something that first of all sounds as powerful mm -hmm. uh, as it does, because I imagine it will have you know, just Cedric sharing that is going to be powerful in and of itself. But also what a great illustration of the way you guys, uh, you know, came together as an organization and a kind of umbrella organization, uh, all about making connections, maintaining and uh, strengthening connections um, in different ways. Um, just this is a great example, both from the, pe the folks that you'll be collaborating with to do it, but also because it brings value, it, it kind of focuses on that very, again, powerful intersection between art and activism, art and social justice, et cetera. Uh, so looking forward to that for sure. And yeah, uh, I, I can, I'm happy on record to commit ACMI to, uh, to helping out in whatever way we can. Um, Cecily, when we last spoke to you, uh, <laughs> the world was different, um, and the art project, the public art project, major public art project for this year in Arlington was just getting going at that time, as, as Stuart has already referred to. Um, why don't we start there with you just uh, giving us an update on what is going on, reminding folks, first of all, what the project is and who Michelle Luigi is and uh, and just, you know, bring us up to date with what's going on. Great. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, as, you, as you say, we, Michelle and I were both on your show, I think maybe in December. Yeah, it was um, back. Yeah, it was again, back when the world was different. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and that was a great way to launch the project. And we did have a formal launch at the Robbins Library also in December. And it's a wonderful project where Michelle has been serving as the town's artist in residence, um, teaching people how to crochet with a kind of yarn made from disposable plastic bags, single use plastic bags that's called Plarn. And the message of the project is that we really have to reduce single use plastic to protect the environment. At the same time, we're making something really beautiful uh, for installation along the Minuteman bikeway. Uh, we've been, been working with a whole group of great partners. So we've had really, wonderful participation at workshops at the Fox Library, um, at the Council on Aging, at the Thompson School. And just before we had to close down, we'd gone to visit the green team at the Audison School and the art club, the after school art club there. And the kids were so psyched about doing artwork that was also a part of environmental activism. And then we had to shut everything down. So we've basically been weaving this community through crocheting um, and had to switch to virtual. So we made a series of how-to videos and posted them on our website so that anyone could participate at home. We stopped sharing plastic bags. We had probably collected over a thousand plastic bags. Um, and, you know, understandably, people had a lot of priorities with COVID to do with homeschooling their kids suddenly or caring for maybe an older person in their family. A lot of our craftivists ended up being mask makers for the major effort that was going on in Arlington to donate masks to, to uh, Chelsea and other places. So we lost a little bit of momentum in that sense, but we had a core crew that were continuing to make things and we've heard from people as far away as uh, we had an artist in New, in New Orleans who kind of came across our project on the web and she has sent us a whole bunch of hot pink um, kind of funnel shapes that are going to be incorporated into our sculpture. So yeah, if I can just interject for a yeah. second. Um, that, is a, that is a really interesting thing that we should all um, you know, be reminded of, which is 
there's a lot of reasons to lament all the things that have been lost. Um, again, kudos, as Stuart was saying to you, Cecily, and others for, you know, being flexible enough to figure out how to meet, keep moving these projects forward under the constraints. But as you said, moving things online all of a sudden, you know, expands your audience or those who can be exposed to or participate uh, in this community project so that it becomes a very large community in a sense. And that's right. exciting. Going at, it's sort of, we have been constructing our projects and thinking of our projects as hyper-local, but, and, and so it took a little while to realize, oh my God, these now can be international, you know, and, um, not only that, but it also helps with, say, people who have disabilities or a busy schedule or for whatever reason can't leave their house for a gathering, even if it's just, you know, half a mile away. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it makes the programming accessible even on a local level. So as I say, we've, I'm going to just share a few pictures because the stage we're at now is Michelle is assembling um, the components that people have been making and um, building, building, uh, building them into sculpture. And um, so here are a couple of pictures from a pickup that I did recently, um, <laughs> where I just went around town and picked up some elements from some of the folks who are still hard at work making things. Mm -hmm. And, um, this is a scene we did a photo shoot with Michelle and a wonderful Arlington photographer, Asha Kepka, so that we would have some imagery for when we're really getting ah, going. So <laughs> here you can see that these individual, the, the, what we've been calling the blue bowl or the orange tube have been assembled into these really cool um, structures. And here um, is Michelle on the left and Lori Berenberg on the right. And we're masked up for a walk along the bikeway to start thinking about where these items, these pieces of sculpture could go. Um, and <laughs> our plan is to use sort of the negative spaces in trees and, and hang the works um, under the canopy. <laughs> this is me trying to climb up 12 feet. <laughs> And How delightful, though. I mean, really, that's just, you know, such, I mean, for people who are aware and looking for it, great. But also, obviously, everybody who uses the bike path is going to come on, uh, come upon these things. And uh, it really is going to uh, just further enhance the experience of being in one of the lovelier areas in Arlington anyway. Yeah. So we'll actually be trying to work with professional arborists to get the, uh, get some of them up um, in spaces that there's no way we could tackle and others will be trying to put up ourselves. So that's where we are with that project. And it really, we, we've, we've probably had contributions from a hundred or so people in the end, we counted everybody who's done, done things for the project. So it's been right. great, really wonderful. That is, that is great and, and, and really nice again, having had a chance to be there uh to talk to you guys at the launch of the whole project and then kind of you know shaking my head like a lot of other people when covid descended and i'm thinking how can that move forward anyway things are actually happening and you know maybe on a different timeline but congratulations because it really is going to be the public art uh celebration that we uh that we had hoped for um Stuart had also mentioned though that there are other things going on that you've had to pivot around. And one, one that we've talked to you about before and that people are familiar with, it happens every year, is the, the Fox Festival. My understanding is that you've had to change that, obviously. Um, what's, what's it look like right now? Right, so the Fox Festival used to be live workshops in the Fox Library and the Thompson School, and kids and families would build uh, masks and giant puppets, and it was very hands-on, like, you know, here are some great materials, go to town, and whenever a kid got stuck, they'd come over and we'd fix what they're doing and help, help them out, and uh, people made amazing things, and then we would have a big parade with a brass band as part of Feast of the East. 
So I met with our artist team, which is Carrie Percival and Greg Cook and Sarah Petey, and we brainstormed and we came up with the idea of um, inviting people to make home puppet shows. So we're, and we're, we wanted to kind of expand the amount of environmental education and the advocacy for local wildlife. So I made two videos interviewing Diane Welch, our fantastic mm -hmm. Arlington animal control. Always, yes, always a popular guest. <laughs> yeah. And so on Arts Arlington, you'll find two videos and one is about foxes. But the other one is about owls because Diane showed up on Zoom um, with her great horned owl perched on her wrist, her owl named uh, Nula, who she adopted as a baby owlet. So we thought, all right, we're going to have the epic adventures of fox and owl. <laughs> and so Carrie drew these really charming little puppets, paper puppets, that anyone can print out on our website, which is artsarlington.org, and you'll get a piece of paper like this. And you can pretty quickly make them your own by coloring them, collaging them, making them look the way you want them to look, cut them out and stick them on a piece of a twig or a chopstick or a pencil. Here's our little mm -hmm. tiny fox. Um, and make up a story that you'd like to share with Arlington. And so there are levels that you can do this in because um, it's pretty complicated to make even a short movie, as I'm sure you, James. As we might know, yes. Know very well. <laughs> so um, you can do something as simple as a puppet show at home for your family that we never even see, you know. Um, uh, you can cut out Fox and Owl and put them into a drawing that you make of a forest or of your favorite place in Arlington and put that up in your window to make a message for your neighbors from Fox and Owl. Um, but take a photo of that artwork and send it to us. You can also set up Fox and Owl in an interesting environment, like Fox might like to meet some of these animals <laughs> behind me. Um, and Take a photo of that, might be in your backyard, maybe you've got some beautiful flowers blooming or a cat that you might want to introduce them to and send us some photos that make sort of like a little slideshow or go full steam ahead and make a video which should just be a minute long and uh, or less even and you can tell a story or you can just have a moment. Um, an artist uh, made a fantastic video where it's just a picture of fox dancing with a peony while owl rings a bell. So um, we're actually going to see an example though made by ACMI community producers of a really cool story where uh, owl gets stuck in a jelly sea. So let's take a moment and just look at that real quickly. Owl spreads his wings and hits a branch. He topples over <coughs> into the sea of blackberry jelly below. The owl tries in vain to flap his wings. Help! I'm stuck! A fox scampers over to the edge of the sea of jelly and peers in. Ooh, berries! I love berries. They make a delicious dessert after my tasty meal of crickets and mice. Mmm, tasty. The fox backs up and takes a running leap into the sea of jelly and briefly goes under, then emerging. He paddles over to the owl, gulping down some of the berries on the way. Since you're here, can you please help me? Be happy to. He wraps his front paws around the owl and pulls him free with a loud sucking sound. And they move toward shore. Behind them, a dolphin leaps up from the sea and waves her fin. Hey, how's it going? Why don't you stay a while and visit? I have treats. Try this delicious shrimp. No thanks, I'm not a sea creature. Okay, weirdo. The dolphin waves again, leaps up and plunges back into the sea. The owl and the fox collapse on the shore. Thanks, buddy. I owe you one. Glad to help. They both shake themselves off. Fox, 
I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That has all the uh, hallmarks of a one of our studio nights, ACMI Studio Nights Originals. So uh, that that was wonderful to see. Thanks for yeah. thanks for uh, giving us an opportunity there, Cecily. Well, I I love that video um, because of its playfulness and humor, and you can see that the. People who made, first of all, it took a little crew. So if you're taking this on at home, I'm now going to say a few words to the viewers at home, you know, and list your whole family to, to, to make uh, the video. You can give people different roles. There's a lot of information on artsarlington.org. Find the section about fox and owl, and there's lots of tips and other inspiring examples to give you ideas. But, you know, maybe one person operates a camera and others operate the puppets and you can always use iMovie or a program like that to add sound later or edit your video um, if it doesn't go right the first time or just make it over if it doesn't go right the first time if you're shooting it with your phone and you'll learn from doing it don't be afraid to do it just jump in and also you may see the ACMI folks invented that dolphin character they just added a character of their own and they drew it um, and you'll also find on our website a little video by Carrie Percival, who drew our puppets, telling you, giving you ideas about how you can draw your own animal neighbors, different animals. Well, that's great describing of all the different things that people can do to participate in the Fox and Owl uh, Festival, so to speak, this year. Um, traditionally, though, it always ended in a parade, as you said. So are you going to be pulling all these pieces together in some way that's a virtual representation of that parade. Tell us about that. Yeah, exactly. We're calling this the Fox and Owl Tiny Film and Photo Festival. So we're going to have a festival screening, most likely in September. So you have plenty of time to produce your, um, your work, your artwork, your films or artwork. And we will put it all together into a giant celebration of creativity and urban wildlife and our our neighborhood and Fox Library and uh, you bring the popcorn. <laughs> we will look for that for sure. That's it reminds great. me, uh, Cecily, of uh, the Hardy School's participation last year and because right. the dolphin is their mascot. So it's nice to have that call back. I just want to say so I really want to give a shout out to both Stuart and Terry Holt, who got our website, which is complicated and extensive and has been a lot of work to build. Um, they've, they've provided this incredible support. We have a whole area with these tutorials of Michelle Lugie and this extensive area about the Fox Festival with interviews about animals and inspirational videos and tips. So really, thanks so much to the two of them for making that happen. Great. And the last word goes to you, Stuart. Uh, I'd just like to say, I think uh, this is another great example of how we're, we find a silver lining in these challenging times. Uh, this wonderful project has now gone townwide. We've, we've extended the reach of the Fox Festival so that everyone can participate. And we're inviting anyone out there who's passionate about the arts to participate with us further through our new uh, Facebook uh, group at Arts Arlington and also we have two commissioner openings and several committee openings for anyone who would like to become part of uh, creating some of these wonderful programs that improve our town. Why not? Why wouldn't people want to get involved with such a kind of robust and fulfilling uh, kind of work that you guys are engaged in? So on behalf of Arlington and as a long time resident here uh, I just want to thank you guys because you've changed both the face of Arlington, literally how it is to go up and down Mass Ave, uh, but also a lot of work that is invisible, as you guys have uh, alluded to, um, that really does improve the quality of life for all of us here. So I've been speaking uh, with Cecily Miller and Stuart Ikeda um, from Arts Arlington. Um, really appreciate you guys being here. Good luck with the project you've described and with your work going forward. This is Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us.